Development Board. I'm sorry, CRA divide, uh, CRA Advisory uh, Committee um, for this uh, February. Um, can we begin with uh, the Pledge of Allegiance? Roll call. Chair, you want to take the roll call, or should we just announce who's here? Just, just announce. Okay. Um, we have board members uh, Clark Reynolds, Blanca Cobo, Claudio Sanchez, and Mike McDearmaid, who are uh, here present. We also have uh, staff members, Aline Ghani, our director, and we have. Um, Carrie Henley, who is our what's your budget administrator? Butter, budget administrator, and uh, Duke Sori, who is our coordin CRA coordinator. And Rasha Kama, who's also one of the consultants. And Rasha Kama, who's a consultant, and we also have our new, um, I guess, uh, what is your exact title, Shannon? I'm the purchasing, purchasing director. Manager. The what? Purchasing manager. Purchasing, purchasing manager. Uh, we are also joined by um, uh, Shannon Graham. Thank you all very much for coming. And uh, Nikki Johnson, budget, I'm um, sorry, administrative uh, coordinator for public works. Okay. Hi, Nikki. How are you? Um, I tell you, you say that someone is, someone else is typing the minutes. Right. Okay. Just a couple things. Uh, first off, please, <coughs> when you come to the microphone or speak, um, announce your name. As those of you who looked at our minutes, um, notice that there were some, several places in here that were said either inaudible or couldn't, they didn't know who it was. So please, when you speak, just say Clark or Blanca or whatever so that the, uh, whoever's typing up the minutes says an unidentified voice that will know exactly who that is for the minutes. Um, the second thing is that the minutes should be, um, amended to read under the call of order and the roll call that uh, Claudio Sanchez was here um, and he was admitted from that so please make that note as well. Um, and there were also lastly some references in our minutes to uh, Steve Jelkowitz speaking on behalf of Gray Robinson and it was not, it was John Heron. Heron. John Heron, H-E-R-I-N. Okay. All right, um, those notes being made <coughs> uh, to the minutes. Um, we don't have a quorum, so we can't vote on them, but certainly we can make the comments. And hopefully tonight we'll operate as the committee of the whole and um, uh, go through this as quickly as I can. I know, as I say, I know some people are, um, have other engagements. So with that being said, um, Duke, you want to um, move ahead with um, agenda item number one. <coughs> yes, um, agenda item number one is CRA parking study. Um, this is a repeat item from last meeting. Last meeting we had a presentation by the Cordino group regarding the parking study for CRA. Um, our hopes um, in moving forward were that we would be able to adopt this parking study as, as, as part of um, you know, uh, our policy, or not even policy, but um, as a study that we would look at to move forward in the future with any possible parking um, issues that may arise in North Miami because of the downtown redevelopment. Mm -hmm. So we were hoping to have this adopted. Uh, we will, since we don't have a quorum, uh, we will move to have it adopted by the CRA board uh, at the next meeting. Okay. Uh, certainly, um, I think several council people are looking for our input. Even if we don't have a quorum, we can operate as a committee of the whole. Um, no, we have one, two, four. three, four. four. We have four. Um, I know <coughs> that. Um, what do we need for four? Seven. 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 
I know that Kenny each <coughs> called, and he unfortunately has to uh, go to the um, um, a viewing of a one of our staff members' uh, father's passed that he was going to that. Clint Bauer uh, called and said that he would not be able to make it because. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Police department. Um, yeah, Sharon. Yeah. Uh, Sharon Pilcher, father, father died. I believe her father's name was. Um, yeah. I think. It, um, he operated a pharmacy on 7th Avenue for like 20 years. Yeah. Um, so Klein, I think his last name was. Yeah, anyway, so. Uh, but certainly we can we can discuss. Does anybody have any comments on the parking study that for the members here present? Um, if all the members want to be here, they all can. Mm -hmm. They all show up. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I think uh, the presentation was done by uh, the <coughs> consultant. I'm yes. sorry, Alim Ghani. Executive Director, um, the presentation that was done, it really showed the need. And to give you a brief, you know, you, you had a copy of, uh, there is a copy in the agenda as well. Right. It actually presented the need for the parking. And if the city is to move forward with any sort of redevelopment along the 125th Street corridor to go with a vertical or increased density in any way, then parking is definitely will be an issue that we have to address. Mm -hmm. um, whether it's part of the CRA or the, the redevelopment plan for the city or part of the capital plan, uh, I think the need for all the business owners uh, along that corridor, it has really shown, you know, or manifested itself. So with that, I think with the presentation, I would definitely mm -hmm. like, or move, like to move forward in adopting this study to take it before our board. I agree. This is lack of approval. Even if they change some of what was presented, mm -hmm. it's really needed. Yeah. Um, I, I know there's a new retailer in the town mm -hmm. called Brother here, and that's going to put a lot of pressure on the parking lot there. And I know we have a plan here at Corcoran's to re redo 144th Street, but refashion it somewhat to so there can be parking there on street. That'll help, but I mean, we're just kind of stuck. I mean, yeah. it's crazy. That's right. But on what it seemed to me when I saw the study was that on 125th Street, those lots are underutilized. I don't know how to make people use them, but um, they think that's something that, you know, they, uh, you know, it's interesting. You know, we have we don't have any parking on one side of on some one on South 125th, and we do have parking north of 125th. Right. I guess it has to do with City Hall. Is it? City Hall and Malta and all of that is here. Yeah. High right. intensity use. High intensity, yeah. So if we ever do something where we actually make people start paying for parking, then maybe there's a way to like, okay, you can park for free over here or you can get charged over here or there's a limited time period over here. I don't know. Right. Something I think to put in our, our put in our minds. Um, <coughs> um, so maybe I, a better I, I'm sorry, Blanca Cole, better way of coming towards hundred and twenty fifth from 126, because there's only one entrance, you know, that without having to go around the block and all of those. Mm -hmm. uh, this is Mike. Um, I agree with Clark. I think that one of the problems on a, on the park on 126, if there's no, everybody, we you know, is sort of like Main Street oriented. You're going to park where you see something on the Main <laughs> Street next to where you want to go. The only problem I see is that a lot of the um, directions, the fact that there is parking on 126 is on 126. In other words, it's not on 125th Street. So you have to know to turn left. You go one block and there's a big sign that says public parking. Well, unless you turn on an avenue and go to 126, you don't know it's there. So maybe we need to do something as part of the 125th landscape. Um, I, we noticed when we went up to Del Rey, I believe it was, that they had a lot of directions on their main street showing where off street parking was. And I think that's something that probably needs to address. But I, I agree with uh, every, you know, Clark and uh, Blanca on the. Anything from you, uh, Claudio? No, thank you. All right, so I is. I I'm sorry. I uh, wanted to make a couple comments, Mr. Chairman, if that's okay. Absolutely. Thank you. It's uh, Steve Zelkowitz, the CRA attorney. Um, first of all, I apologize. I wasn't here at the last meeting. I had a death in the family. Um, so this may have been said already, but I've, I've reviewed the, the parking study, and what's important to the CRA 
with the parking study is it, it mentions the original redevelopment plan and it had an element for parking in it and what the CRA was going to try and accomplish with respect to parking. And it's also important that going forward with RMA, who's going to do the amendment to the redevelopment plan, that they either include this parking study as part of the plan or pull from it what is in here to become part of your amended redevelopment plan. Because those are the projects that you want to do. You need a parking element in your redevelopment plan, first of all. So um, this gives them the, the guidelines and the framework of what they need to have in the amended redevelopment plan. Um, and secondly, uh, I mean, if they're going to ever reprint this, they should, they should list the CRA attorney on here as well, because they list the board members, the executive director, the coordinator, and the like, but they list the city attorney. Well, they had to correct um, the maps as well. Yeah. The map yeah. said, said northwest, not northeast. Yeah, so <laughs> if they ever correct that, I mean, they should list both of us. I mean, that's fine. Yeah. Um, the, final, the final document, yeah. I think we should transmit that to them. So. So, but I, I otherwise I thought it was excellent. Yeah. It represents the projects that you want to uh, try and accomplish moving forward with the extended life of the CRA. Um, and uh, uh, we should, uh, if they don't already have it, obviously RMA should have a copy they of this. They already got it. They, right, have it. they have it. They have it. Good. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So and, and with that. Okay. And and that being said, um, this, uh, we definitely um, want to make sure this is uh, voted on for the next meeting. So, Steve, I don't uh, just. As we need to word our agenda item any better, when or to be voted for the board. I th okay, I think so. that if we can make it a unanimous decision of the committee present, a um, consensus, a okay. consensus. Okay. I think that's basically is sufficient for what the council people are okay. looking for. Mm -hmm. um, that being said, do we all have? Is there a consensus, uh, Blanca? Yes. 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 Clark? Yes. yes. Claudia? Yes. And Mrs. Mike? Yes. Okay. All right, then we move on to agenda item number two. Number two is the uh, FY1415 budget presentation. Mm -hmm. And we're going to let. Um, the mic. Uh, yeah, oh, that's the mic? Let Rasha Kamu, um, the consultant for the CIA, she know, will be presenting the Walking budget. With you. Okay, good evening, everyone. Again, Rasha Kamu. Um, when um, Arthur and I met with the county to discuss the transition of staff and administration and also moving forward, what their issues were. Their first issue were how the CRA presented their budgets in the past. Um, it was a little bit too complex. Um, it was not that easy to follow. And you mean the fold-out sheet? Well, <laughs> <laughs> I, did, I don't know what it looked like, but it what was, they said. Was that yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. but what they said was it was a little bit, you know, a little bit too complicated for, you know, we don't even have any projects, brick and mortar projects, and yet our budget is a little bit difficult to follow. So yeah, that was one of the tasks that I was given to do. So, and also I've already sent a draft to the county to make sure this is the county format. What you're looking at, this is what the county asks for. And so I went back to the spreadsheet, as you all have it, it's right after the PowerPoint presentation. And this is, yeah, but it is, it is exactly the format that the county looks for and also the narrative. So you should have everything. I found it very simplified. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, but what I would do for today is, what I usually do is just a PowerPoint presentation showing last year's what was approved. Again, remember that the 13-14 budget was approved in October of this year. And normally, and our CRA attorneys here, we're supposed to submit our budget 45 days before the budget cycle. Okay, so we're always behind the times. We cannot spend any money until the budget is approved by the CRA board, the city council, then the county. I thought they always did that. But we always get it approved after, after the, the fact. fact. After the fact. So we already spent the money by the time we got it approved. Which so is well. a violation of, of policy. Well, we, Mr. Chairman, yes. can, can I address that, the CRA attorney? Um, what, what happens, Ms. Reynolds, is that the county is usually behind in, in approving the budgets in the first place. The CRA is usually on time or a little late this year. Um, what the advice has been in the past, that as long as the CRA and the city have approved it, we would spend the TIF from the city, but not the TIF from the county. All right? That way, we're not, we're not using any county dollars um, that haven't been approved by the county, but, you know, since we felt that 
we had approved it, us being the city and the CRA, we could spend our own money. Um, we have discussed that with um, the, the folks downtown at the county, George Fernandez at the uh, at the uh, office of what is management it budget management, 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 management budget management. and and they've agreed with that because they realize that they don't always approve these even if we got it in 45 days before um, the budget cycle starts they usually don't approve them until after January 1st right but if they have a budget that's two years behind that's a little that's a little bit I mean, this is the 1415 right. budget but it just yeah. got <coughs> the last budget just got approved yeah, the 1314 yeah. he's talking about yeah. Yeah. Sally well. Heyman railed Yes. So at the last meeting, she did rail. rail. She, she did. So. Mm -hmm. <coughs> okay. Well. So. Yeah. Well. Okay. Uh, I mean. We're going to be better. So, in the moving forward, <coughs> um, so if you look at the PowerPoint presentation, I'll share it with you. You'll see I have the thirteen fourteen approved budget, which was recently approved, and what we're proposing to do for the fourteen fifteen budget. Um, Last year, our city TIP was 267875 This year, we actually have a great bump of 621904 Is now, there any specific thing, in anything that came online that contributes to that, or is that just the increase in property value in general? On the east side. Remember, our TIF comes from the east side. Well, the, the TIF from the yeah, city comes from both sides. Not the city yeah. TIF. The city TIF the comes from oh, both Oh, the whole side. side. I'm sorry. Yeah. Yes. So yeah, that's so the whole part. So do we have, is there any specific thing that happened there that made a big bump, or is it Arthur. just in general? Well the, tip, well, the tip is going up as, just as Artisori, um, just as um, the revenues for the city did go up with the tip, the same thing is going to happen um, more with the CRA and property values as such. Mm -hmm. So that's why the funds have So it's just a general up. increase in property value. Yeah, right. just a general mm -hmm. increase. Nothing property specific. Value. No one no. specific no. item. Yeah, um, just just general, yeah. just general increased revenue. And, and you can see the again next year also. And the you can see the county tip as well went up. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, the county refund part, um, the agreement that we have with the county is that we refund them the west side right. of the tip. Before eleven twelve, we had um, paid them about three hundred thousand dollars for two years, mm -hmm. and lately, for the past two years now, they actually owe us a refund. So this is the seventy-two thousand six hundred fifty. So we, we overpaid them. Is that what we? Well, did? they do their adjustments yeah. always two years back. But we, but we basically so overpaid them then at that yeah. at one point. Basically. Okay. Because they, they, what they do is they, they estimate it, and then when they do finalize the taxes mm -hmm. and the value, and you've done all the value adjustment board uh, reductions and so on, and the county always does their adjustments two years back. So if we had overpaid them, that's where they they do the math and then they give us a refund. But if you recall, uh, Mr. Chairman, please off the screen. The, the county had clawed back um, a great deal of money from the CRA um, two and three years ago, on the on the basis that um, these people didn't pay their real estate taxes. And at this point, they're they're adjusting that because at the end of the day, the county does get paid those monies. They sell certificates. The mm -hmm, certificates right. ultimately get redeemed, and they get their money. So there's really no reason for them to take it from from us. And that had always been the position that we would take. Um, so this number, Rasha, if you mm -hmm. just confirm, the 72650 is actually then a refund that they're paying us. So it is income to us because yeah. a couple of folks have questioned, you know, the fact that where's, where's the payment back to the, the county at the end of the year? Is the 233289 a net number then of the refund? No, 233289 is our county TIF, and they do a separate line item for the 72650. Okay. So out of the 233, 289, don't we have to give some of that back at the end of the year from the west side? They pay us the full tip and we have to give them money back. No, what they usually do, and I looked at the historical when they send the email, mm -hmm. they, this is the county tip that they, owe, that they owe us, and then afterwards they would tell us, based on the calculation, the west side, this is how much we owe them. Okay, so there's no west side repayment at the end no, of this fiscal year? No, not on our end. Okay. This is their, uh, them reimbursing that's, us that's for that. That's good to know because a couple of folks have asked me about that and um, I'm glad you explained that. Yeah. All right, good. Okay, um, moving forward. The carryover from prior year, that's 13-14. Again, mm -hmm. um, we, there were pretty much not that much activity. We did fund, we did approve funding to commercial improvements, um, Canasuk and Captain Jim's. 
Um, one of the things that uh, the previous budget had was to buy an incubator for $715,000 and so on and so forth, and we didn't do that. So we only really spent money on salaries and these two projects. So that's why you have the carryover there. <coughs> okay. Um, in salaries. Interest earnings. Do you have another question? No. Okay. Interest earnings, again, because of the amount of money that we carry in our bank, we always project for some interest this time. I've, we've done a little bit more conservatively because that's the amount really that we collected the previous years. So what we're proposing is that our budget for the revenue for the 14-15 will be 2.274950. So we'll get a bump of 515246 Okay. In terms of the expenses, what we're proposing is, again, if you look at the 13-14, you can see that the salaries and fringes for the past staff was 219920 now, um, for the 14-15, because even though Arthur is the CRA coordinator and he's doing this part-time, um, the city staff that have absorbed some of the functions, finance and, and public works, we've budgeted about $27,000 for it per, per year. We will need a full-time person, whether it's the director, the executive director, the coordinator, whoever it is, that the board decides to hire. Okay, to do what? Full time. You need a full time staff person to do this work because um, Mr. Sori, as a budget director, cannot. Well, hold this both the executive director, and I know we're going to discuss this later. Mm -hmm. The executive director position mm -hmm. is going to come in subsequent to the approval of the extension of the life of the CRA, correct? Or are we going to do it now? The board will actually make that decision on Tuesday night whether uh, we hire somebody or not. Um, I think what uh, Walter is saying is we have taken into account there is a possibility that we may be hiring someone full time. We need to try to put that in the budget. So, so the board tells us whether on it's Tuesday a coordinator. We're not going to hire anybody or whatever. Then we'll move forward and then we'll make that change at this Tuesday meeting. But as of right now, with the direction we've been given by the board, we have budget requirements for that. Okay. And we've and that's capped. Within, that's within the. That's the salary. How much that's is the salary for that? It's capped at ninety nine thousand plus fringes. I mean, again, keeping in mind that Commissioner Heyman said she didn't want to see any six figure salaries, right. so. So ninety nine thousand plus fringes. Okay, so. That's the one point three. Yeah, because what I did is um, <coughs> the coordinator position on the administrative. Mm -hmm. Twenty five percent of the coordinator's position is under administrative, and then the seventy five percent for operating. This person right now, I mean, because again, I'm here temporarily to assist and help, and I'm helping people who are applying for grants, mm -hmm. past people who have pending projects, and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. So a full-time coordinator, that person's responsibility is to not only assist people who are applying, businesses who are applying, marketing the CRA, but also working with the consultants RMA once the plan is amended and approved and if the CRA is extended, all these projects that are coming down the line, you need a full-time person to take care of it. Okay. So we're just budgeting for precaution. And where, where is the line item for RMA? It's under professional services, CRA plan downtown. It's under operating expenses. At the bottom? At the yeah. bottom. Like on the first They are, they it says 120, but that includes, I get 30,000 annually, so I bill by the hour when I do show up, and then their contract is for 70,000. So you do have a cushion for additional consultants if it's necessary. So that's not that's not obligated, that's just a cushion? It's a cushion. It's just a cushion. Okay. Yeah. It may also include some of the legal expenses yes. included with Related that as well, to that. because the legal budget is just for coming to the meetings, meetings. and doing the day-to-day -day gotcha. activities. So anything related okay. to the redevelopment plan, the downtown plan, anything related to the extension of the CRA, mm -hmm. that's where that line item, that's where those expenses okay. will come from. So we got everybody covered. Yes. Everything's covered. All right, well, okay. everybody covered. So um, moving forward, again, if you see that, you can see the changes mm -hmm. that we've reduced. That's one of the things that the, the executive director had requested to make sure that, you know, once we've absorbed these services, these functions, we're not expending more money. Mm -hmm. So we're not dealing with office space, phones, and so on and so forth. So you can see the reduction there. Um, in terms of capital projects for grants, what I have done is, let me 
look at it. Um, I have budgeted for commercial rehab, um, $200,000. That's the one that's up to 80,000, 50, 50 match, right. where we can now more aggressively focus on businesses within the downtown corridor mm -hmm. that may not be get developed right away. We also have gotten some requests from people from 7th Avenue that are very interested. Um, in terms of the commercial beautification program, we've budgeted $100,000. That's the fi up to $15,000 grant program for businesses or property owners. Mm -hmm. Again, I did that based on what I see we've spent, we've already encumbered in the past. So I, I try to be conservative and make sure that we're able to move forward. Right. The carryover funds for the encumbered projects are for Count Astruth and Captain Jim's, as we had said, because they were approved for 80,000 each, so that's 160. Plus, um, we had a pending project with El Kiosco, whatever other pending projects we had that we've already discussed in the past, but we haven't resolved yet. The, li the money's there in case, you know, everything is done. Okay. Um, in terms of capital projects for infrastructure, last year we really didn't have anything budgeted except the, uh, inf the incubator that we were thinking right. of buying for 715000 This year we're going to be focused on more brick and mortar, the downtown parking lot, the first parking lot, based on the plan and the discussions we've had with the planning department and, and <coughs> Arthur and his staff, they've, budget, they've estimated that like the first parking lot will be about $7.2 million. Okay. 7.2, okay? That's seven stories. It says the estimate. That's the estimate, that's what I said, the budgeted. The estimate, yes, the, the, the estimated cost estimated of eliminating the parking, uh, parking okay. garage. But if we do anything above, um, above and beyond the basic one, basically if we decide to skin the parking lot and make it look like something on Miami Beach or something, then uh, the price does go up. So how, how much? Uh, probably another three or four, th four million dollars. Three or four? Just yes, for to skin, skin it? Yes, to skin it. Wow. So it's a ten million dollar project. Basically. Yeah. 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 And this is the seven stories we're looking at with retail at the bottom. Um, we would get, if it's the first parking lot that we're talking about, which is on 8th Avenue, we would have parking space for City, city Hall, and the rest of it would be for the commercial. Um, we're looking at possibly, when we do put it out for bid, to see if a developer would do something on the rooftop as well. So this is where we are. Now, based on that, I mean, we haven't talked about the design, we haven't talked about <coughs> any of that. So the cost we've budgeted for, again, is for the downtown parking lot is a million dollars. That's including legal fees, design, whatever else that we come up with, and understanding that if we do get this parking lot approved as part of our plan and the county approves it, we have to take out a loan, all these things. You have to bond it. <coughs> take out a loan, <laughs> I like to say. But, you know, whatever it is that is necessary, we have budgeted for it. So I just want to make sure you, you understand. And this is only for this, for this year. Okay, moving forward. The streetscape project that we have budgeted, again, yes, as Mr. Reynolds had mentioned, we have a retailer, a brand new retailer that's moving in, and due to parking restrictions, um, we are going to invest in renovating and improving 124th Street. Uh, we're going to be putting drainage, parking, landscaping, and even a walkway, my understanding is, through the wall so that people can, <coughs> pedestrians can walk through and people can who park access, can access. Can access. So that's what we're proposing there. Um, the 77000 is for four circles. These were roundabouts that were already <laughs> budgeted and, and paid for. However, they were, they were not finished. They are missing the lighting. They're missing the, the irrigation to maintain the plants and, and so on and so forth. So this is what we got um, when we bidded out the three bids for the traffic circles that we need to finalize. Art in public places, I'd like to let... Mr. Sori talk about it because this is one of his ideas that I think is wonderful and would help us out a lot in our visibility. Yes, Art Sori. The Art of Public Places is basically we reached out to Dane County and the utility boxes throughout the city. Uh, we're proposing to wrap the utility boxes with artwork uh, throughout the CIA district. Um, if you go to Dania Beach, you see them there. I think they have some maybe in Miami Beach also, but the utility boxes, you don't notice them until you see one wrapped in, because we're just so used to seeing them, you know, so it just blends in with everything else, but um, it will be a cheap way for us to do art in public places, to have these utility boxes wrapped on the side, so when you're mm -hmm. passing by, you see a nice piece of artwork, you know, maybe uh, a 
Picasso or something, you can take art that's already been uh, copyrighted and, and use it. Um, I, I, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no. Go ahead. So um, that's what we're proposing to do. Um, it cost us about it cost about three hundred and fifty thousand dollars. No. So you said I'm it's sorry, three hundred and fifty dollars. Three hundred and fifty. I'm sorry. Three hundred and fifty dollars for that. So it would be about 142 so utility we're boxes. <laughs> uh, we do have a, 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 a committee within the city Bless that um, evaluates all the public so spaces. We <coughs> so we'll work no, with the committee once this is approved to see which artwork and where it goes at um, throughout the city. But it's a cheap and easy way for us to show some immediate improvement, something the CIA has done and that people can appreciate. Aren't there, aren't there grants also available through the state? And the county, I think, for art in public spaces. I think Through the maybe. Cultural Affairs Department, yeah. yes. Yes, yes, Some yes. Well, you have to have an art in public places committee, I think. You have to have someone to apply. Right? Yeah, yeah, you have to have a committee to apply for it, yeah. Um, $350 a box, that's pretty cheap. Mm -hmm. um, who does this? Um, there, I think it's only like a couple of outside companies that would do it. Um, but we've reached out. Um, the planning and zoning department has actually already did all the legwork for me. I just saw the box and went to them and said, hey, that's really neat. How do we get some of those in the city? And they did those things. Um, they did look all the information up and they came up with, we got the approval already from Dade County. <coughs> and which utility boxes? The ones for the traffic lights. Yeah, oh, those just big, the those big chrome things yeah. you see yeah. sitting on the street. Sometimes corner. you see posters, stickers, <coughs> and graffiti yeah. on them. So like the, uh, the telephones and the other, uh, yeah. telephones are not included. No. Yeah. Well, no, yeah. the big they control the traffic lights, those big silver okay. things. Those are owned by the county, right? Yeah. yeah. There's pretty much one on almost every corner, every intersection. Mm -hmm. So it would be a lot of artwork that you'll see throughout. You could, you know, make a statement throughout the city with the artwork, and then people start looking for them to see what's next and where they best go. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, so and I, I've seen them done in other CRAs as well, yes, very yes. successfully mm -hmm. yeah. in Dade County. So it's, it's a project that, you know, other CRAs have been successful with, and it, it does beautify the boxes that are out there. Okay. So it is. It would be about 142 boxes based on the is that, budget is that estimate. All over the city? All well, over we're going to start. Let, let me let me correct sorry, you. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, we're going to start with a downtown corridor yeah. and then spread it to the major corridors within the CRA. I, I, when people say the city, I like to make sure we understand yeah, it's it within the CRA, even though it covers 60 percent of the city, only the CRA area. Uh, just just one point to mention. Actually, we took there's a design as as Mr. Sori was saying that was done, a conceptual design that was done by our planning department. Um, there's a few concepts um, that they have presented depending on the size of the utility box. Um, we also have some of our pump stations. All is not going to be used for the pump stations. We are looking at act actually adopting the same concept to use in the Keystone San Susi neighborhood, which they have looked at already. and accepted three of the designs to go into that area. So it's something that they have accepted and you know, moving forward, not only the downtown, but other areas, residential areas in the city, wants to adopt the same thing as well. Okay. All right. So um, if you have any okay. other questions or concerns, we intend to present it Sorry, to the CRA anything? board for I, approval. I, I'm so happy with the, pres with, with the presentation and the format. Right. Like I said, that closeout out before, Blanca? No, that's a fine one. Claudio? Yeah, let me come to that and you <coughs> turn the mic to the front. Hello, Ms. Hennessy. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something I hardly mean. Mm -hmm. uh, when you said about the $1 million, maybe we have seven floor, it will be like three, four million. Uh, Mr. Madero said that we will bond that. Who will pay for it? Normally, when you take out the, the CRA takes out a loan or bond it, you're promising the future tax, the future TIF revenues yeah, to pay you, for you're it. You're bonding it off the future TIF The future TIF. Well, have you one seen one of the the no, no, the people, no. 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 Well, well, sorry, the people okay. won't necessarily pay for the TIF money that we do receive. Once we get the license of CRA extended, say for 30 years, we know for 30 years we're going to get a minimum of a million dollars, let's say. So that's $30 million. We could say, hey, for the, for the next 15 years, we want to pledge a million dollars against that. Um, and we'll have $15 million to do the mat work up front for the future TIF money. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, but we will not take all the money that we receive. No, no, it's not. No, no, no. What you see is it says city. There is, there is money that is coming from the 
Yeah. For other projects. For other projects. Yeah. And we will have, we're looking to do a public private partnership. It's not saying that all the money is going to come from the city. We're looking to do a public private partnership or developers that might want to do some stuff also. Yeah. I want to play a lot of things. Who will be in charge? Who will be the administrator? The city or a private company? Well, well, not even close to that. Yeah, yeah. We're, I, I think that's one of the things. Yeah, but we need to know. Yeah, we definitely, when we the time does come for that, we will. No, if this, as, the, as this comes down the road, they will bring that, they will bring that to us to discuss as this gets closer to actual reality. And I'll definitely um, tell you, Mr. Sanchez, we're, we're definitely, the city's not in the business of managing Casa de Agua, so that's probably going to be a slim chance for them that we're going to be managing it. Mm -hmm. um, it might be somebody manages it, but they're responsible for the maintenance of the Casa de Agua at the same time. Right. The staff and the maintenance and the cleanup of the Casa de Agua. So we'll come up with the most equitable way of doing it, um, but I don't think the city will be in the business of managing the Casa de Agua. Yeah. Then Collect money. Yeah. 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 It, it, it might not be charged. We don't know if we're going to charge the park there yet. You will manage parking lot and you will not be charging nobody? Well, we have parking lots now and we don't charge anybody in the city. Yeah, but that's not parking lot. That's <coughs> That's a lot of logistics to be worked out. Yeah, right. and, right. and actually, if you look at, correct me if I'm wrong, I think Clark, uh, you know, and I think Steve does as well, that like if you go to Miami Beach, they have a parking authority, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yep. okay, that charges and the money goes to the city, but that's way in the future because we're not, you know, when that comes forward, you know. Mr. Chair, yeah. um, Midtown Miami. The Midtown CRA was yeah. created for the parking lot that they built. They, they right. used the TIF and so on. For the first five years, parking was free. Now it's two dollars minimum. Yeah. And they have yeah, the management and so on and so yeah, forth. Yeah, they have their own but internal management. To support the development, mm -hmm. they invested in a, in a huge parking right. garage, and you know, at the beginning, it was free. Well, you know, one of the one of the things, Claudio, is that every CRA that's the ideal you get. That's how you create. The real development, and correct me if I'm wrong, Ms. Lee or uh, uh, Council, if we, um, is CRAs like to bond, that's how they create these massive projects that move the city forward, is to, is to bond it against the income of the TIF coming in. So uh, Because like you're expecting that. It's basically collateral. But you're exactly. also expecting that the investment that you've made on that parking lot is going to make that developer redevelop this area, which means then his taxes are going to go up. And therefore, your taxes are going to benefit, and the tip is going to go up. Okay. So. As far as the, the budget, what do you, any comments, Blanca Cobo? No. Claudia Sanchez, anything else? Not anymore. Not anymore? Okay. <laughs> All right. Is everybody in agreement that we. <coughs> yeah. Clark? Okay. Okay, everybody in agreement that we recommend. Do you have a consensus? Consensus moving forward. <coughs> Clark? Good with it. Blanca? Yes. Claudio and I as well. Okay, can we move on to the next agenda item? Next Which item is, is uh, the redevelopment plan, um, discussion timeline and benchmark. Um, the <coughs> so at the last CRA meeting, um, they, uh, the board voted to hire redevelopment management associates, mm -hmm. RMA, and we've been in negotiation with them and they, um, the contract was finalized on Friday or like halfway. I don't think it's been completely executed. So they were not able to come today because they had a, already a scheduled um, meeting. They will be coming to the CRA board meeting to do their presentation. I wanted, I think I, it was included in the packet, I wanted to share with you what they will be doing and their timeline. Mm -hmm. So you can see, you know, in the packet, I just want to make sure. <laughs> I do have a packet. Blanca is it? I didn't print it because it was too many pages to print. But we can email oh, you. Yeah. Well, it's pretty easy. Yeah. yeah. So just to work on the plan. They're, they're, we're doing, at, at this moment, they are doing their groundwork research. They're meeting with planning and zoning. They've already gathered all the past studies and research that we've done. For instance, the parking study, well, the downtown redevelopment. Yes, the downtown redevelopment plan that was done in 2013. There was also uh, an economic development study that was done by strategic planning group that they're mm -hmm. incorporating. Everything that they've, you know, we've done in the past two, three years, they are gathering them all and they're gonna be going through them and determining the priorities. We've also um, briefly met with them already
to discuss the, some of the changes that we need to see within the current plan. Um, one of the issues I will be talking to our CRA attorney in the future is the housing program, how it's written right now as a loan as opposed to a grant to, for us to make that change moving forward so that the people that we've given out loans to, we can either forgive it or we come up with a better plan. Um, they will also be working on public-private partnership analysis. So they're going to be working to determine the stakeholders that we have, the developers that are interested in the area to see what is actually feasible, what we can do mm -hmm. so that we can move forward. They're going to work on the CRA plan itself, working with the county, our CRA attorney, working on a finance plan because at the end of the day, we can come up with a wonderful plan, but if we don't plan out how we're going to pay for it, what the projects are, then mm -hmm. it's you know it's it's not it's not a good plan and then at the end of the day working on getting it adopted we are required to have certain community meetings through the advisory committee the CRA board workshops we need to advertise them they will hold these meetings to get input from the community mm -hmm. to see what else we need to do to change the plan then we will be meeting with the county throughout step by step to make sure that we are in line with what they want to see um, when we Mr. Sori and I met with the county to talk about the possibilities of extending the life of the CRA, they were clear. They said, bring us simple projects, brick and mortar projects that you can actually get done and make it tie it to the to the redevelopment plan. And that's when Mr. Sori had presented his three point catalyst approach and um, that we, you, you, I think you had seen it previously and mm -hmm. they loved it. They liked it because it was simple. Of course, again, it addresses the parking concerns. It helps developers redevelop the area. So at the next um, advisory committee, I'm pretty sure that uh, RMA staff will be there and they'll be able to talk to you a little bit more, give you more information and answer all your questions. But I just wanted to give you uh, a list of what they'll be doing and their timeline. Okay. Okay. Mr. Clark, any questions? The one thing I want to point out, um, the in terms of the timeline, they estimate everything will be done as far as they're concerned by July 3rd, but considering August mm -hmm. County doesn't hold meetings, right. then we are in a freeze for budget cycle, which is the whole month of September. Mm -hmm. So they're estimating that between October, November, December, that's when the county will present <coughs> it at their county commission and they'll be there. So the last is where it says to be completed December 18, 2015, that's them saying we're estimating that that's a, that's a time that the county will finally probably schedule it based on the fact that they're closed in August, not closed, but you know, they're, they don't hold meetings and they're, they're going to be busy, busy with the budget cycle. And, and assuming that we have, um, assuming that with all the meetings that have to go before that, how much of a window does it ha leave us left before? Well, this, the CRA would expire October 1st, 2016. Right. So you, if, if this gets approved, worst case scenario gets approved December, 2015, you have what, eight, nine months. Okay. So we have a pretty good buffer then. But yeah. still, I mean, uh, yeah. I, I'd like to tell people, you know, in December, the city, uh, the Miami Beach CRA had seven years on their CRA and they just got their extension approved. Yeah. So, you know, usually you're supposed to be looking a little bit more okay, well ahead. So okay, we well will do our do our best to make sure it gets it extended. Fast. Yes, exactly. Okay. Any other comments, Clark? Blanca? Yes, I think that it's great that you have worked yeah. this out. Okay. Okay, so we uh, the consensus is that we move ahead and approve the, the plan at this point in time. Timeline. Clark, you good? Yep. Blanca? Definitely, yes. Fabio? Okay, and Mike, uh, yes. Uh, Mr. Chairman, okay. just, just so you know, this is the actual scope of work that is attached to the agreement with RMA. So what you're seeing are all the tasks that they've said they would do. Okay. Very good. Okay. Um, <laughs> next agenda. The review and advisory committee is in your schedule. Um, um, I think it, one of the issues that we had at the last meeting is because the, we didn't have quorum the previous mm -hmm. meeting, we moved it to 24 hours before the CRA board meeting. Not a good idea. Not a good idea. <laughs> um, so we need to, um, even though you don't have quorum, that's another issue, is to discuss making sure that we do have about at least seven working days between the advisory committee and the CRA board for staff to properly do what, whatever they need to do based on the recommendations mm -hmm. from the committee. Um, well, we 
we've always met on the first Monday of the month unless it's a holiday. So we can just stick with that. That gives us a full week before the council meeting. So your your re real Monday holiday would be Labor Day because that's the only yeah, one that falls that's on the a only Monday. Martin Luther King is and then and then we always or Martin Luther King. I thought he, um, because that's that wouldn't affect them. It's first the first Monday of the month. First Monday. The, the first, first Monday, Monday of the month for yeah. a holiday is really Labor Day. Right. right. And that um, do you do you would like to do it like the Tuesday? But it can't be we the following Monday. That's I the issue. I think I think the last time we we had that issue, we met on Tuesday rather than Monday. Is what we did. We run into all kind of conflicts with other committee meetings, so it's probably one day out of the week. Well, I th well the problem was did I think we met somewhere else that meeting because the planning commission meets on the Tuesday. So, so it'd be more of a location. It's more of a location issue yeah. than anything. So we could else. like reschedule it on the fourth floor conference room. Yeah, exactly. If we can make it work. Yeah. And and the other item that I think we're, um, Councilman Galvin had brought up. Um, is a way to communicate what the advisory committee, what the consensus is, what they re vote to recommend, so they know in <coughs> advance. So um, either what I think s we had, some, uh, Mr. Zelkowitz had suggested <coughs> is when we do our cover memos, when we are presenting to the board, we would just put a bottom narrative, RAB advisory committee recommend, and then whether you recommended yes or no, and, yeah. and if you're uh, there to add to it. Yeah, uh, uh, and uh, Councilman Galvin mentioned um, today that it was, you know, he wanted, if if someone was there from the committee, that somebody from there from the committee get up and say this is what happened. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, staff should be able to, be able to do it um, either way. Yeah, and we'll just put it in our cover memo as where it says staff recommendation. Right before it, we'll put, you know, the RAB advisory committee has recommended this or, right. or not recommended it. Okay. So. All right. Anything Any else? other questions for that? Art? Good with it? Okay. Blanca? Um, okay, so that being said, um, the consensus okay. is that we uh, recommend that, um, you know, the dates be the first Monday of the month, except for that, except for the uh, Labor Day, which will be moved. And, um, that um, the whoever is present for the committee make a presentation to the city council as to the board's CRA recommendation, board. CRA board's recommendation. Well, okay. I, I know what, um, the, the CRA meeting is only an hour, uh, so when we do do that, we basically have some brief comments. Yes, brief comments, always brief. <laughs> okay, our next agenda item. I'll leave that for the executive director. <coughs> Based on direction given at the the last board meeting, the CRA board meeting, um, <coughs> I was told to go out and get uh, put out an RFP for an executive director or coordinator. Sure, not available. <laughs> um, so we did. I came back and I instructed. We collected the scope of actually the the job description for executive director slash coordinator from, from other cities. And what I did was we put it out on the street and left it there for two weeks. Um, we had no responsive bidders. Um, it closed on Friday at 3 o'clock. What happened was we did get one person coming in with with a, um, a submittal, and the submittal came in at 4.10 in the afternoon, which really was a non-responsive uh, proposal because the deadline on the bid was 3 o'clock on Friday afternoon. So with that being said, I'm, I'm going to recommend that we put it out. I've spoken to members of the board. I've spoken to two of them already today and what I will do is to prepare a scope of uh, um, a job description or take the same job description I have in the RFQ and put it out as a regular posting that the city will post. Um, so I'll move ahead or, or based on direction I get from uh, on the board uh, I will move ahead with, with posting that job with the salary as indicated in the budget 
What salary would you would you put in your mind? I will I will put a, a on a range yeah. of salary from eighty to about a hundred and ten. And the reason why I'll do that is because with fringes and everything, we have budgeted up to one twenty three. So it's up to the board. And one of the things that I, I brought up today with, with one of the members is this. At this stage, really, all the, all the, the, the aspects or that is required for the CRA to move forward <coughs> is being done. If it is the direction of the, the, this advisory board or the direction of the, the board itself to move forward on hiring an executive director, we ha I have no, you know, that's the direction that they want to give us. That's not a problem. As it is right now, the focus should be on moving the CRE forward or getting the life of the <coughs> CRE extended. Which is what CMA, uh, RMA is Which doing now. Which is what RME was hired for. We have all the pieces in place right now. We have the staff that is pushing RME. Um, we have Rasha on board with us so far. I know, I, you know, we still have to talk to her to get her, yeah, to get her on board for a little <coughs> further to assist us. But uh, I know she's been doing a tremendous job. Um, maybe if it means increasing her hours to assist, we could try to do that. As it, as I was said earlier, staff took over the role on a part-time basis. My budget <coughs> staff is getting a percentage on a part-time basis. His staff. A public works is getting a small percentage, you know, 2%, 5% of their salary to assist in, in moving the CR in and in consolidating all the effort. So my recommendation is this. At this point, we have all the pieces in place. If we could get commitment from Russia and, you know, us, I don't mind moving the CRA forward and controlling RMA, which is already laid out. Basically, all the work now is what RMA has to do to get the life of this CRA approved. Bringing a CRA executive director now really does not make sense because you're going to bring in somebody for a nine-month or eight-month period, and if it is voted on to do away with the CRA or the life of the CRA is not extended, then what happens? <coughs> so I think, you know, it's it behooves us, you know, to, to recommend this to the board or to rec recommend this to the advise the advisory board because you know I think it's some it's a hard decision to be made everything is in place staff already did it we have RMA in, on in, you know in board we have our CRA attorney Mr. Zokowicz who have got guided us through this process you know so we have already navigated through this <coughs> the key now is getting the stuff moving getting coordinated with the county, getting RMA, make sure that we meet all these milestones as Russia just presented to you. So with that, well, that is going to be my recommendation. Well, if I might, um, I, I think first off that when Sally Heyman was here, Correct. she was pretty clear that she thought that staff could do it with the with the guidance with the guidance from county staff from county staff that's exactly now I, I, I'm telling you that I think that that we between uh, our between Aleem and Terry and Duke I think you guys are great I think you know what you're doing I think that to follow Sally to say look they can do it with the with the um, with staff because it'll be free, and F-R-E-E -E is really good. Um, so I, I think that, um, you know, now I understand that, s that um, you know, that people say, well, we need an executive director now because of the fact that we need somebody who gets, who gets it now so that when the, C when the CRA gets involved and gets and, and, and is extended, mm -hmm that they're on the they're on the run they're already on the run but I I think that with the current staff that we have and the county staff who's willing as Sally says to do it for free I I think that that's you know maybe we ought to wait until we get it done before we start looking for an executive director Clark what do you, Clark what do you think
Um, yeah, Doris. Uh, Clark Reynolds. Uh, I completely agree with you. Uh, Sally was very clear. She was very clear about the relationship that staff has developed <coughs> right. with the people downtown, mm -hmm. and they were the relationship in, enables them to work very easily with staff and to get good direction and to know what else other people are doing in the county. And they've got RMA who's working with CRAs all over the county and in Broward. So they've got a very, very good pipeline. And we um, have our CRA attorney working with them And we as have well. a CRA attorney to keep us out of trouble. And um, I, I almost think that a CRA director, the time spent bringing them up to speed will interfere with the process uh, uh, and the rapport that they've got going. I think when you got something, when you're on a roll, you don't need to take a time out. Um, you need to keep on going. And, and uh, I think that, I think you're absolutely right. Yeah. Blanca? <coughs> I agree, really. Uh, if they're doing all the work, what do you need to bring somebody that is not familiar with what you have been doing for all these months to do what? Just sit there and look pretty and get a salary? <laughs> well, yeah. Um, Claudia? I agree with that because what, <coughs> what we will be doing is spending money that we don't have. And Ms. Geraldine already explained what's going on, how they are doing that. Downtown is uh, expensive, right? We have the lawyers, Correct. the attorneys here. They don't need to hire nobody. <coughs> that is what, that what recommendation can we make when we don't have work? We don't have energy. Well, so what uh, can we do? well, I think we can we can have a consensus that we want to move ahead right. on this. I, I think that um, I agree with Clark and I agree with uh, Blanca and your and yourself. I think that we have a very talented staff, and I think that if we do what our county commissioner says we should do, she was very clear. You guys can do it. Work with county staff and they will help you get it for free. Now, it just seems to me that it's really good that we do what our county commissioner says we should do because she's the one who's going to be pushing forward with us. Right. If, we didn't have the pr if we didn't have the professional staff to do it, I would say, well, but we got the guys to, we got the guys to do it. So um, I think, um, Steve, any comments from you? Well, I mean, first of all, it's a policy decision um, for the board, but uh, I think the executive directors articulated a very astute position. Um, I agree with the comments that we do have the staff in place to get this done. And again, I think the bottom line is either you, you want your county commissioner's support, um, Sally Heyman or not. I mean, I know we also have other county commissioners who will be supporting us, but she was here at the meeting, mm -hmm. and uh, I think her voice was uh, heard. Um, so with that in mind, I mean, if, if the uh, board in its uh, discretion accepts the executive director's recommendation, um, I think that, you know, you have the, the horses here who can do the work and get this done for you. And if not, and they want to go forward, then we'll have the, the, the city can, you know, issue the job description, description, job description. On, beha on behalf of the CRA. Okay. Correct. Well, I, yes. I think that the bottom line is we have a great team not only with staff, but I think we have a great team with our consultants. We have a great team with our, co our county commissioner. So I think it's, uh, I think that we should uh, have a consensus that we tell the um, CRA board that we would like to um, move forward as is and perhaps have a, um, once the CRA life is, uh, is extended, that um, if we need to, that we move to at that point in time, do an right. RFP or RFQ for executive director. It doesn't matter to me because my salary doesn't, uh, you know, is right. not affected know, by the CRA. Okay. As part of the job as a city manager, I took over the role of executive director. I've tried my best so far with the limited time, and, and I, I must say it's, it's because of staff's effort, both Duke's effort, um, everybody here, from Nikki, Rasha has been a blessing because, you know, with her expertise and other CRAs, I lean on her and Duke a lot. So if I have something on the agenda, it's, it's, it's because 
I'm consulting with them. You know, if it's not on a Wednesday and Thursday, I, I'm, they, they're trying to scramble to grab me into a meeting, and I told you to look at this, Aleem, I told you to look at this. And that's why I like, you know, I like them, because they think they bring, they bring up the right stuff, and they, they, br they bring to my attention what needs to be, you know, brought to my attention. So okay. with that, then, you know, I really, yeah. Okay. All right, so that being said, the consensus, everybody here, is that we move forward with the team as we have um, until such time as the um, CRE gets extended, and then we'll uh, make that decision or crossroads as we come. Um, Clark, you, yeah. you good with that? Yeah. Blanca? Yeah. And uh, Mike, we're all here. So that being said, that'll be our recommendation. Is there anything else to come before us, Greg? Uh, let me just say, I'll say one yeah, thing. Sure. Uh, I, um, you guys are doing a, a great job. I hope that you, sh sometimes I look at the board and I'm not sure they realize just how, how well it's going. So, um, I mean, I tell them, the people that I know, that things are re have really turned around and really right. are going a, a lot better. Right. But I, I just, I think that you should not be shy about giving your opinion because you, you know a lot now and you, you've come a long way. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. <coughs> Absolutely. The, 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 the difference without belaboring it um, is that the difference between the team before and the team now is light years away. Okay, so well, thank you. You know, you guys are, are really doing a great job, and I think we're really going to move forward. And I think we're in that zone, Clark. I think we're everybody is for us, the county commission, you know, and, and everyone else, and everybody else I, th that's on board. I think you know, uh, it's time to move ahead. Anything else, uh, Sue? No, no, we're done. Well, what I do is for the TV. Okay, a a I don't know if uh, Mr. Any, any final comments, Steve? Uh, uh, just that I agree wholeheartedly with uh, the chairman and the other uh, committee members that you know there was a transition period, but I think that we're, we're over the hump. We're moving full steam ahead. There's a lot of hard work to be done ahead of us, but I think we're ready to do it. We're, we're dug in and we're going to get it done. And I'm looking forward to that. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. All right. I oh, sure. Uh -huh. I was just trying to say then, <coughs> if was looking to hire any sec executive director and pay them eighty something to one hundred twenty. Why don't we pay Charlie that money and pay him what they deserve? Because this is well, maybe we we are getting paid right. percent small, percent yeah, small percentage, but yeah, 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 small yeah. percentage, five percent. I I think each one got a five percent increase, or. In, in their salaries just for handling the CRA stuff. Okay. So, good. yeah, and you know, if it takes a little more, as I said, you know, I have to talk to Russia. If it means increasing Russia's hours. Poor Russia. Um, and, <laughs> and getting her on board, you know, a little more. Or, you know, we, yeah, we definitely will explore. Well Again, you know, the point I'm trying to make <coughs> is we have RMA on board. The idea is to manage RMA. As long as RMA do the job or the scope of work outlined in their contract, and we have somebody to manage that, then we're going to be at the point where the CRA's life would be extended. Okay. At that point, as long as you reach that point, then it will behoove this, the, 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 the board to, at that point, hire an executive director. You have a plan moving forward. You have everything. Take the plan, hand it to your executive director, run with it. This is what the CRE has decided. This is for the next 20 years. Let's move this plan forward. Mm -hmm. And you will have marching orders for an executive director. Mm -hmm. It's not like you would not. At that point, then you can move forward. So, okay. 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 All right. I, I'm s sorry. Go Clark, ahead. you want to? Okay. Um, there nothing um, come before us. Um, so thank you, everybody, for, for coming here and um, being here and your input and um, expressing our consensus uh, that we can go before the okay. CRA advisory board. So thank you very much. I just thank just you. wanted one mention. Um, you know, I'd like to thank the the attorney Steve Zokowicz for his. Um, I know last week there was a lot of emails going back and forth 
with RMA in trying to nail down their contract. Um, it's not like I had, I didn't respond, but I saw all the email, and um, you know, your work is, we'll, we'll see. And I must say that it's because your, your hard work, and, and again, Rasha and Dukes, you gotta call Steve and make sure this has happened this week. Um, you know, but we, we got it done, or we got 90% there. I so, and we, we appreciate all the help in trying to get this RMA contract completed before, right. you know, the end of the week. So much, m m uh, you know, uh, and much plaudits to our uh, uh, CRA advisory uh, uh, attorney for all the things that he's done to make sure that this is going on and we're going to move ahead. Okay, thank you very much, everybody. Thank you.